Welcome back guys to episode 7 in my no clickbait money making series for GTA 5 Online. It's been quite a while since the last episode so if you guys do want more of this series please take a few seconds to just leave a like and subscribe, it really helps support my channel and let's get right into this. Today I'm going to be showing you guys one of the best methods at the moment to make money as a solo player. This is a method I use myself when I just feel like playing without anybody else and with this week's bonuses it makes it actually one of the best solo money making methods you guys can use at the moment. So the bonus this week is double RP and double cash on Leicester contact missions so you guys will be making double RP and ranking up quickly as well as making a lot of money. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys the best missions that you can complete for maximum payouts, also the best time to complete them in um, for using Rockstar's payment system and also just some general tips and tricks for each of these I'm going to be recommending to kind of maximise your gains per hour. Later in this video I'll be showing you guys how to make a playlist so you can make faster money with this but to start off you just want to head into GT Online, go to your menu, online, jobs, play job, Rockstar created jobs and then missions. Here you're going to see a list of all the different contact missions you can play. Now as a solo player I'm going to put on screen the four missions that I recommend you guys play. These are all very easy as a solo player, they're quick to complete and they're pretty fun too. And at the end of the video I'm going to show an extra mission for if you guys do want to invite friends or play with random people for fast money as well. Also, if you are hosting the mission, make sure you do always have the difficulty on hard. This basically means that you or anybody else um, playing with you gets the maximum payout. Now, I'm going to quickly run through all of these contact missions I'm recommending with you guys and give you the best strategy to complete them efficiently. So first up is Crime Scene Star. To host this yourself, I believe you need level 20, otherwise you can join with someone else if they do host it. So if you have an armoured Karuma, it's going to make this one so quick and easy. I'm going to show you guys an awesome strategy that I've been using for it. So basically just hop straight in your armoured Karuma, head over to the crime scene, and what you want to do is just smash right through those police barricades and head over to where the briefcase is on the middle of the ground. Now what you want to do is just shoot the people around the briefcase and then what you want to do is just quickly hop out your car uh, where the briefcase is located and it'll pick up straight away and hop straight back in your car. Now you might want to open up your interaction menu and have some snacks ready if you, if you are low health for this but usually you can just nip in and out your car if you do shoot those two or three um, police officers that are around the briefcase. Once you've got the briefcase you basically just want to lose the police and then you head back to Lester's warehouse. A really quick way to do this is to head over to the tunnel or just um, use your minimap to go through the streets and avoid the, the police cars on the minimap. And that is pretty much crime scene start in a nutshell, a very quick and easy one. Next up is on manoeuvres, this one requires level 65 to host. Again it is a lot easier if you do have the armoured Karuma, you can you drive that over and use it to keep cover while you take out all of, the sh all of the soldiers around the Annihilator. Once you've taken out the soldiers, what you want to do is hop into the Annihilator and what this does is triggers a checkpoint that actually sends a few helicopters and an enemy jet after you. So what you can do is use that nearby buzzard to quickly take out that jet that's going to be pursuing you. You can use the buzzard's lock-on missiles to quickly take that out. And then once you've taken that out, you want to land back next to the Annihilator, hop in the Annihilator, and then take it all the way back to Sandy Shores. On your way to Sandy Shores, you will notice there's two helicopters that are going to be chasing you. They're probably not going to do much to you, so I usually just ignore these and get back as quick as possible. The next mission is called Bust Out and it requires level 55 to host. Now this one can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you mess it up, it can um, end up dragging on a little bit longer. But basically what I like to do is head up north to where the pass tunnel is. It's kind of like a tunnel that puts, uh, cuts through the, the mountain. And basically I like to set myself up with a little ambush waiting for the prison bus to come. Now, if you're good at sniping, you can just quickly snipe the driver of the bus. Otherwise, you could just shoot out of your car if you mess up your snipe. Um, you can just shoot the, the driver of the prison bus and everybody will get out of the bus. There is another police officer on the bus kind of escorting the convicts out. Um, sometimes the convicts will actually help you take that other officer out or just um, shoot him so he doesn't end up killing you. From there, you want to head back into your car. You, d you don't want to take the prison bus because it's a really slow vehicle. And um, You want to head back into your car if you're using the armoured Karuma. It's probably going to really help you out to protect you from the police that might be shooting at you. But um, yeah, you just want to escort him um, back to the checkout after you lose the police. 
Also, while you're losing the police, you might as well drive southwards on the tracks because you're going to be having to head um, south anyway to drop him off to the checkpoint, so you might as well head in that direction to save some time. And the fourth mission that I'd recommend for solo players is High Priority Case. This one requires level 25 to host and is actually a pretty fun one um, to do, especially if you have a buzzard. So if you're starting out in your office, you can just ask your uh, assistant to spawn you a buzzard on the roof for $500. Otherwise, you can call um, Pegasus and have them spawn a buzzard nearby. Now, what I like to do is hop in the buzzard and fly right to the top of this building and take out any guys with just my homing missiles. It makes it quite easy to just take out a lot of these guys. Now, you just want to be careful not to blow up the objective. So I try not to shoot anybody that is on the ground floor or even the ground floor un underneath the, the building because that kind of risks blowing up the objective but yeah, you're quite safe to take out the guys on the top level so I like to just um, take out all the guys in the top level with the buzzard, land the helicopter and then get out, finish up the, the last few guys while I head down and pick up the suitcase. Once you've got the suitcase, be warned that when you pick this up it's going to trigger a helicopter that's going to spawn and attack you so you want to be careful and ready for this helicopter, you want to take it out before you leave um, so use whatever weapon you want to do, either just snipe the, the pilot or um, you can just use a minigun like I am to take out the rotor and quickly take out that helicopter. So you can hop back in your buzzard and fly on over to Lester's warehouse and that's a really quick and easy way to complete this mission. The last mission I'm going to show for you guys is called a Titan of a Job. It requires level 24 to complete and I'd basically recommend only playing this one if you have other players. If you're doing this solo it's going to be a little bit frustrating and probably take you um, much longer than recommended to complete. It might even take you over 15 minutes to complete solo. So make sure you have other players when you're doing this one. But it is a fun mission if you do have friends or if you want to invite random players or even um, some of your crew members um, to come on and join with you. The best way to complete this one is to head in an armoured Karuma, hopefully someone in your lobby has an armoured Karuma and you can share with them and you just want to drive on down to the airfield and take out all of the mercenaries, either sniping them or yeah, just drive around in your Karuma and quickly take them out. Now you want somebody to actually move the truck out of the way for the Titan. I don't know why nobody in my lobby had I think four other players here and nobody moved the damn truck out of the way so I had to kind of squeeze past the truck and I ended up taking out one of the rotors from the Titan which made it a huge pain for flying back so hopefully your teammates are a little bit more helpful than mine were in this match. But yeah, basically just fly the Titan back to Sandy um, Shores airfield. I had to do two passes at the runway because, as I mentioned, the, one of the rotors were out and it was kind of messing up my landing. So just make sure you land it correctly. You don't want to blow up the Titan here because it's going to be really frustrating. You'll have to do it all again. But um, once that's landed, that'll be mission complete. There are also a few other missions that you can play if you have other players with you. Hack and Dash is pretty fun, Denial of Service and Cops Capacity are other missions that are fun and um, good to complete. Um, and yeah, you can make a playlist out of these and um, quickly complete them if you're doing them consecutively. Now it's important to mention in this video that payouts for these contact missions are no longer guaranteed. Like the wiki page says, the payments are now actually based on how long you spend in the mission. So if you complete one of these missions in 15 minutes, you're going to get 100% of the payout. Whereas if you complete the mission in 5 minutes, it's going to give you less of the reward. However, you might be thinking, well, should I just waste time in the mission to hit that 15 minutes mark every game? But doing that would mean that you're completing a lower amount of contact missions per hour, assuming you're using this as a money-making method. So you really need to factor that into your money-making equation. The ideal time to finish contact missions is actually between 4 to 5 minutes and the reason is because you make more per hour by completing around 12 missions per hour rather than stretching out 4 jobs to the 15 minute mark to get that maximum payout. So if that makes sense guys, basically you want to complete these missions in around 5 minutes. Don't stretch them out just to try and get the maximum payout. It's not really worth it in the long term. And the last tip I have for you guys to help your efficiency with using these missions is to make a playlist. It's going to save you a lot of time if you're looking to consecutively play these contact missions over and over rather than reloading into free roam between each one. Now for some reason we can't actually choose the missions we want to make a playlist with. What, you, what you'll have to do is play these missions first and then you can select them from recently played jobs and make a playlist that way. Just for some reason we can't select these contact missions into a normal playlist but once you have played them you'll see they are appearing here and you can make them into your own playlist. 
And yeah, that's pretty much everything you guys need to know about this money-making method. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 7 in my money-making series. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the next episode. Leave a like on the video, it really helps support my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.